Hiya oh, folks, we're out in the garden again. We're doing a little vlog today. Uh, Project Man's Mondeo ST220 bumper, which we painted in the uh, inflatable spray booth. It's time to get that back on now, so we're gonna be helping him to put that on as well today. So uh, let's get going. We'll show you the repair, and uh, then we'll get it fitted back in the car. We've got to put the grill on, and obviously this um, lights around as well. It's got to go back in the bumper. So let's get on with that. So yeah, we reinforced it with uh, fiberglass, folks, and it was split all the way around there, as you can see, up there, all along there. This bit had broken across there, and it's actually separated. But as you can see underneath now, you can't actually see that repair anymore. So he's just in the process of putting that back together. Let's go and find out what he's up to. Oh, he's here. What you got to do now? Just put a bit of glue behind them tabs on that lower grill. All oh, right, okay. These uh, tabs can sometimes break off. Oh, there's metal clips for them. Eh? There's metal clips for them. Is there? Yeah, in the log cabin. What, these? Yeah, they push over the top of them. Oh, we don't need to do that then? No, you don't need to do that. See, the thing is, he never took them off. You see, me and Jimmy took them off, so that's the reason why we knew it. So you don't need to do that. So abort mission on that one. They just push over the top like that, them little things there. And that holds these type of grills on. But some of them have got little tabs on, a lot of bumpers. And if that is the case, that is a little way that you can actually support them without um, having to worry about the bumpers, uh, the, the grills falling off. So just a little thing there for you. What are you doing, Merlin? Merlin, what are you doing? What are you doing? All right, so you can turn that over. Yeah, always a bit, got to be a bit careful when moving these bumpers about, folks. But uh, where, where was the bit I fixed? Hold on, down there, where was it down there? Let's come and have a look. So literally, folks, all this was hanging off. This was hanging down, didn't it? It dropped down, didn't it? Yeah, it was all separated. Yeah, so just got to be careful when putting things back together like this, but uh, there was a crack up there as well, which you can't really see. It's not the best job in the world, but uh, it'll do the job anyway. All right, so we're just gonna screw this little black thing back in, folks. And as you can see, I only actually sprayed this part of the, the bumper. We didn't spray any more, none of this and all that, so that's all as it was. But one thing I did find out on these bumpers, I've got that plastic weld gun, as you know, look like the little staples. And um, we tried to cover them in the back and melt through. And you give it a little quarter of a turn and it's supposed to secure these plastic bumpers together with a little wire metal strap. That didn't want to take on these for some reason. This type of bumper, really flexible type, it sort of, didn't it all just sort of melt, didn't it? Yeah, it did. One, one. So I think they're okay for ABS bumpers, so, but this sort of flimsy type bumper, which is very, very flexible, they didn't want to take. So if you've got one of them plastic hot staple guns, you could call it, then they don't work on all bumpers. So anyway, that's why we had to go down the fiberglass route uh, and actually drilled holes either side of the crack and pushed the fiberglass through so that created a bond for it to stick onto rather than just rely on it sticking to the back side of the bumper. So there is holes all down there, which again, you skimmed over with filler and that made a better job and a stronger job. Right, so let's get this out the front now and we'll put it back on the car. Yeah, right, go back a little bit now. Out there. Yeah, shouldn't take too long to put this on, folks. Crack that was down there, as I say, and um, we blended the paint up there. We took the paint up to about there and then the lacquer a little bit further up. You can't see where we actually blended it in. And I haven't actually done any prep to this. I haven't sanded it back or whatever, or cut the colour in. And we also had it taped along there. All along there. Or was it along there? That was along there. I think we painted, we lacquered inside there. So yeah, there you go. Pretty pleased with the way that turned out. Right, so we'll lift this back into place. This is the old uh, Duratec STV6, as you well know. Which is going up for south pretty soon, isn't it? Yep, just a little off job and then it'll go up for sale then. But uh, yeah, when he bought the car, the bumper was actually broken, wasn't it? Yeah, I'd never got around to fixing it. And I think all you done, didn't you draw some holes in here? I just had a couple of cable ties. And put a couple of cable ties through there or something, didn't you? Yeah. And that was just holding it together. But obviously he didn't want to sell it like that, so that's what he's uh, had this little repair done for. So we've got two... Uh, are they fog lamps? Yeah. Two fog lamps hanging down on the loom there, so... Let's get it in place. You've got the dodgy end, haven't you? You want to plug it in on first? Yeah, so a couple of sensors to connect in here, folks. There we go. Got it? Yeah. You've got a cable to clip in down there. There's two to clip in there. Just into that front um, 
just under the grill, two cable ties there. That's it. So we're just gonna take the headlight clips out, folks. Put them up there, in there. Yeah, because you can just lift them headlights out of the way. Just to ensure that these clips go in correctly, that's all in it. Can't lift that one out. No. Alright. That goes in there now, isn't it? That's it. So that's them slid in there, folks. And there, it's just easier to locate the um, side bolts when you put in the... There's three bolts along there in there where you've got to come up from the inside of the wing at the back. So that's why it's just easier to have that open so you can see if you're screwing in all right. He's got them little caps that go on the uh, washer jet things. And also, what's that plate from? I think that come from under the, under the wing. Oh, right, yeah. It's got the bolts pulling through the bumper. Yeah. That's just a little bracket you've got to be aware of there, folks. And they're 10 mils, by the way, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, three under there, and then there's two. Right. Into the wheel arch line of the black splash guard. Yeah. Yeah, you have to pull the splash guard back, don't you? Ten yeah, very tricky, that, folks. You have to pull that inner liner back. Uh, I've just, that's what I've been doing, put my foot on there, just to make life a little bit easier for him. And there's them screws you've got to get through that bracket underneath there, into the actual wing and then tighten them up with that metal bracket in between, which is quite awkward. Lucky enough, we've got a few extensions there just to make life a bit easier. He's already got one in. You can't see, but along there, he's got one in. There's one right at the very back. and there's coming about here now. Yeah, there's one about there. You can just see the extension through there. There's nothing I can do to help you, though. You on it? Yeah. There we go. It's an awkward little number. So once he's got it started, he'll get the old uh, battery drill on it and that, then we'll zoom it up with the uh, long extensions. Should see it come through there in a minute, folks. It's finding it again, though. And all, all the time you're fighting against the plastic in a wheel shield. Go on. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, perfect. And the other one is right at the very, very end, so. The bump is now in place there. He's just trying to get that through that plastic wheel arch. You want it? Yeah. There we go. Snip that middle one up. That's it. And as you can see, folks, firm as anything now. Just a little uh, screw to put in the bottom of the uh, inner liner then. What is it, just a Phillips? No, they're 8 mils. Oh, they're 8 mils they are, folks, just the to let you know. Are 10. Yeah, they're 10 mils, and that one holding the inner liner is an 8 mil. You've got a couple of them, have you? Two. Two of them, folks. And we did kick the wheel inwards to the right to give you more access, folks. So we didn't take the uh, wheel off, and we didn't take the whole liner out. And while he's doing that, all I'll do is just put this headlight back in. These are so simple, this design. I don't know why many cars didn't adopt this system. They just sit in there like that, and you've got these two sort of pins here, and all they do, literally, is push in through these holes here. There we go. Push through there, that's that supported. One at the back here. Like that, and all they do, literally, is just push down. Must the lamp in, look. No screws needed at all for that, look. Great idea. This one's a bit more awkward, folks, this side, because there's a bottle down there, isn't there? Uh, wash a bottle, I think it's an air compressor or something. Yeah, something to do with the air, the air con down there. There's a big canister down there or something. It's going in, I think I can see it coming in through. It's just getting the nut on that last one there, folks. Look there, that one's the uh, awkward one. Because you ain't got much space to work in, as you can see, look. And you'll never get a ratchet up there, so you really need the long extensions with the uh, battery drill makes life a lot easier for zipping it up pretty quick that's it it's going in now look mm. yeah good yes yeah that's it tightened there we go so that headlamp can go back in oh there's these little clips folks look straight down look push in that's it done that went in there straight in look at that fantastic those were quite a pain to get in, folks. They, they just clip in. You pull the arm out for the uh, washer, and jets comes out. 
and then they just clip on but they're quite awkward to do then we've got the uh, front grille that goes back on there's a lip here that goes on under that metal thing that holds the front in folks so you just sort of slide it in and push that down and that goes under that lip and that supports it then make sure you get it right with your key lined up correctly then you've got these two plugs that are just half a turn in there one like that one like that just two Phillips screws at the top there just do them up and there's a the second one and just look through there you can get your key from there there you go We've got the um, under tray here, which we're not gonna put on today because we're very tight for space at the moment. Jimmy's car's there. Uh, and that's all the space we've got to work in at the moment. So, um, yeah, there you go. A little bit tricky to get certain things off, but um, it's just knowing where you fix the bumper up in the, the wheel arches, basically, to get to the front wings. That's where you, uh, you, you've you got the three fixings there and three fixings the other side. And also now you've got them metal brackets in there as well. So. Uh, Bit of a tricky job, but it's made all the difference to uh, doing the job either on the car. You wouldn't be able to do that on the car, really, the repairs I made. So there you go. That's the one we repaired. All back together in one piece. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So there's my ST220, folks, which is uh, off the road at the moment. I've just declared that sawn. I've got some work to do on that, as you know, the brakes and stuff. So, uh... Yeah, and this one will be up for sale pretty shortly. So uh, if any of you are interested in it... Uh, about I, three people interested. Right, what, from uh, subscribers? Yeah, just got to sort some emails out for them. All oh, right, so if you are interested, if you go to his YouTube channel uh, in your uh, About Us page, yeah. I think you'll have a link to your email there, won't you? Yeah. If you are interested. I reckon it's going to... I'll tell them now. I thought it's going to go up for about 2,300. But subscribers... If you're interested, I might sort a little deal out for you. So there you go, folks. It might, might be worth you getting in contact with him if you're after one of these. Don't forget, folks, these are going up in value, these ST220s. And they're breaking a hell of a lot of them at the moment. So they are one of the last fast Fords of the old school Ford sort of thing, you know. And uh, they're going to be very collectible. So they're, they're still relatively cheap at the moment. Although they've increased about a £1,000 over the last two years, I suppose. Uh, they're going to go up a lot more, I think, anyway. So finding good ones out there. It's pretty hard, a lot of them are rotted, but um, there's two good ones here. My one's staying, his one's going. And I'm probably going to leave the plate on it, so... Yeah. It so will come the original plate as well. Yeah. And the private plate, I'll probably leave on. Yeah. So I link it with this one. Yeah. Anyway, there you go, folks. Just a little quick fast blast one, this, uh, for you. If you do like our car videos, we've got a playlist on our channel uh, for car repairs and stuff like that. We've got motorcycle repairs, although I've not done a lot at the moment on the motorcycle front. We've got a trotter van over there as you well know which has been going for the last six years and a lot of people say why haven't you worked on that why aren't you getting that going because it's been going up in value and that's not really bothered me if i would have had it all done three or four years ago i wouldn't have got nowhere near what it's worth now or what it's going to be potentially worth so that's one of the reasons folks and uh, don't forget check out the other playlists and this also hey eh? this retro restore yeah do you want to look inside the van Oh, come on come in. Let's have a look. He's doing his van, folks. He's got a van conversion, which he's probably doing. If you've got Project Man on your uh, radar, you'll know that. Let's go have a look at his Vivaro van. All right. As you can see, he's already converted the windows, which this van didn't have any windows in it when he got it. He's got the solar panel on the roof now. So, it, although it's not wired up yet, still loads to do on it. But uh, as you can see, it looks very smart now, this side, folks. Let's have a look inside. I've actually just covered them windows up for now, because I was at football yesterday. Oh, I see. Right, it's a bit dark in here, isn't it? So, but I've just bought some yeah. new wiring. Right. Some two core and some three core. That's heat resistant. Yep. The floor's all been insulated. He's done that on his channel. If you want to see how he's getting on with this, uh, he's doing step by step. Uh, the floor's been insulated. He's cut new boards out on the back there. Although that, he's only just put that panel up because he's doing the insulation now. And... Um, this is going to have a, a a worktop area there. There'll be a, a higher cupboard there at the bit at the end. Yeah, wardrobe at the back. Wardrobe at the back. You'll have a rock, rock and roll bed in there. All the lighting's got to be done. The roof's got to be insulated. I've got a clean one. Look. Oh god, look. look. 
There's no crap on my ring. <laughs> That's Lee Van Camp, folks. If you haven't seen that uh, video on Lee Van Camp, go over to my Butler's Empire channel and you'll see that when I fixed Lee Van Camp's van, he had a little bit of poop on the ring of the seat. And then he said he cleaned it, which he didn't. And it was still there weeks later. <laughs> <Wasn't it? laughs> Rotten. Absolutely disgusting, Lee Van Camp. Anyway, so that's that. Yeah, as I say, I've just been sent a, a diesel heater, funny enough, because I did intend on doing one many, many moons ago when I had my transit van. I was intending turning that into a camper van, but that never happened. But the company who um, I was in dealing with back then have now just sent me a, a diesel heater, so we're going to be test rigging it in here. Although you've got one coming as well, haven't you? Yeah, because I got offered one a few months ago, and I thought that had just gone out the window. And they messaged me the same week as you, didn't they? Yeah. So I've got it now. I've got it here now. I won't do it this week or maybe next week. It might be in a few weeks' time. But I've got this diesel heat, and we're going to test it in here. Rig it in. Oh, that's nice. Rig it in temporary, and uh, see what they're like. Because I've never used one before. They're supposed to be very good and efficient. But uh, yeah, that's what we've got coming up on the channel as well. Anyway, I'm going to go now, folks. I've been rambling on now, so we'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now.